Hey everyone. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk about worst case hardness for LPN via card smoothing and some applications such as cryptographic hashing. And this is joint work with Vadim Lubashevsky, Vinod Vaikuntanathan, and Daniel Wicks. Um, so let's sort of all remember what's the LPN problem. So essentially it's a problem of solving a random system of linear equations over the binary field. So we have a system of m equations with n variables, so you can just represent it as a matrix A. Um, and this is just going to be a random matrix because we're thinking about a set of random linear equations. And the variables is this secret vector S, uh, which is the variables that we actually want to recover. And we are thinking about these variables also as chosen at random because this is actually the hardest case. So I'm going to give you the coefficients of the equation. So this is the random matrix A. And I'm going to give you the vector B, which is A times S. And the goal is to find the variables S. Of course, this is not an intractable problem. And well, there's no noise here. Um, so uh, you can think about this learning parity without noise. But if you want to think about learning parity with noise, then we're thinking about adding a little bit of noise to each one of these equations. So flipping uh, the, the output of the equation uh, with some small probability. Um, and again, this can be thought of as adding um, some IID Bernoulli noise. So this is the learning parity with noise problem, a uh, very well studied problem. Uh, and let's. Uh, think about it for a second and think in which parameter regimes this problem is easy and which parameter regimes it's hard. So um, it's not so hard to see that uh, as the weight of the noise, um, the, the Hamming weight of noise gets higher, gets closer to 1 half. So I'm only going to think about uh, um, noise with, with weight less than 1 half, otherwise it's symmetric. Uh, then the problem actually becomes harder. So we already saw that um, if the weight of the noise vector is 0, then the problem is, uh, the problem is easy because you can just solve it as a system of linear equations. So this is what I said before. So I'm thinking about delta as being the relative weight of this vector, which is also related to the uh, parameter of the Bernoulli noise. So for delta equals 0, the problem, uh, the problem is easy. And actually, also for slightly uh, larger values than 0, it's not hard to see that like, 1 over 5 times n noise is also going to be, uh, is no also going to be easy to solve. Um, and actually, you can take this a little further and show that even, uh, no even if the relative noise is log n over n, then you can still solve this problem in, in polynomial time. Um, and the idea is to just sort of pick a random set of uh, n out of these m equations. And with probability 1 over polynomial, um, all of these equations are actually going to be noise-free. And you can use, this, uh, use these equations to recover uh, the secret S. And then you can ch test it using the, other, use, using the other equations. So I should, I should say that people think of variants where the number of equations m uh, is fixed ahead of time. Like uh, it's, it's, it's going to be some polynomial in n. So either we're going to take m equals, say, n squared, or you can think about a variant where the adversary can specify how many equations he wants, and he can get as many polynomial number of equations as, as they want. So uh, this is uh, the, ca the case of uh, sort of easy to solve LPN. Uh, but if you go a little higher, even if you think about uh, noise weight of log square n over n, then the problem, as far as I know, stops being tractable in polynomial time. And in fact, the algorithm that I just described before is going to take quasi-polynomial time. So it's going to take n to the log n time. Um, and while this is not perhaps not the um, worst running time in the world, it's still not polynomial. So we're going to still think about it as a hard instance of LPN, but it's sort of only barely hard. And I should say that you can also think about any little omega of log n over n, and not necessarily log square, but somehow less than n to the log n hardness seems, um, I don't know, too, um, it gives me the chill, so I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um, so this is, this is on one end. So we're going to think about this barely hard regime of parameters where LPN is hard, um, but it only starts being hard. And on the other hand, we saw that if the noise uh, uh, we can see that if the noise is equal to uh, if the noise weight is equal to one half, then this means that the noise uh, vector might be random, and this means that the vector b actually does not contain any information about about s, and therefore the problem is not solvable even uh, information theoretically. Um, and you can sort of relax a little bit and s say that if the weight is something like one half minus negligible, then this property still remains, and the problem is not even information theoretically solved. So we want to consider sort of the highest uh, um, noise level where the problem is still at least information theoretically solvable. And this is the case where uh, the relative noise is 1 half minus 1 over polynomial. So in this case, if, at least if we, get, if we set m to be high enough, a, a large enough polynomial, then uh, the problem becomes um, at least information theoretically solvable. And we think of this as sort of the hardest instance of the problem that uh, where we have uh, where we want to achieve computational uh, computational advantage. And I should say that for cryptographic applications, uh, this parameter regime uh, might be uh, is is useful for at least in some cases. So it's not a completely contrived uh, parameter regime. 
So uh, this is what I uh, sort of want to set up about LPN, when it's easy, when it's hard, and we're going to think about these two uh, parameter regimes uh, later on. But not right now, let me talk about a completely different problem. Maybe not completely different. Um, so I want to talk about the learning with errors problem. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I, I, it's, it's uh, giving me a very easy time in preparing the slides because the syntax of the problem is almost identical. So again, we want to solve um, um, a set of random linear equations um, with some additional uh, IID noise. However, the difference is that now um, the, noise is, uh, the system of equations is not over the binary field. It's actually uh, modulus some modulus q. And this q is going to be large. It's going to be asymptotically large. And for the purpose of this talk, just think about uh, q being some uh, uh, polynomial larger than n. And usually, people think about the IID noise as being Gaussian, but the exact distribution doesn't matter. Uh, the important thing is that the L2 norm of the noise vector, in this case, is going to be, uh, needs to be small. So notice that here we can talk about L2 norm because, well, these elements are modulo q, um, which, is, which is bigger than the noise regime, whereas talking about L2 norm in the LPN setting, well, it's possible, but it doesn't really carry much meaning. So this uh, LW problem has been pretty useful uh, for cryptography, and we, we actually know um, quite, uh, quite a lot about its, uh, about its properties and about its uses. So for example, we have a worst case to average case reduction for the LWE problem. So this is an average case problem because, well, everything here is sampled from a distribution. However, it was shown that uh, by Regev that um, uh, if you can solve this average case problem, then you can also solve worst case problems on lattices. So you can actually solve these short vector problems on lattices. You don't need to know what they are. Uh, even for the like, hardest lattice in the world, if you, can solve this, uh, if you can solve this average case problem. And I guess you know, it's, the, it's your choice whether to think that this means that this average case problem is actually hard because it's harder than the worst case problem, or that the worst case problem is actually not that hard because it's not harder than some average case problem. But at least we know of this. We have this, uh, we have this connection. Um, we also know that uh, this problem is contained in the complexity class statistical zero knowledge. Again, you don't need to know for the purpose of this talk what uh, SDK is. Uh, however, we know that, uh, or we conjecture uh, that uh, uh, problems in SDK are unlikely to be NP hard, for example. So we know that this problem is not going to be uh, sort of, we have some evidence that this problem is, this problem is not super hard. Um, so these are just some properties uh, that, we, that we know about LWE. And we also have a lot of applications, a lot of cryptographic applications. So starting from sort of the basic symmetric and public key encryption, collision resistant hash function, homomorphic encryption, uh, attribute based encryption, recently non-interactive zero knowledge. Um, so we know how to do a lot of things. And sort of given the sort of minimum, uh, minimal uh, edit distance between this slide and the previous one, you would think that maybe you know, the structure can also carry over, over to the LPN setting. So whatever we can do with this LWE, well, can't we just sort of translate Q to 2? And maybe, as I said, the L2 norm maybe doesn't make sense in the LPN setting, so maybe we need to replace it with Hemingway or something. And we, hope, we, should hope that, uh, we would hope that things uh, will still sort of work out, or at least you know, a lot of these things will, will be able to carry over. Um, but it's not the case. Um, so we don't know of worst case to average case reduction or SDK result. And in terms of applications, uh, we can get, um, uh, we can get uh, symmetric and with some parameter regimes also public key encryption. But a lot of these other applications uh, are still not known yet. And I should say that in the um, sort of uh, recently, there's a lot of progress in constructing primitives from uh, cryptographic primitives from, from LPN. So I should probably check like on ePrint whether I should update the slide. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that uh, there's going to be a lot of progress in, in sort of filling up these blanks um, in, in the sort of near future. However, uh, at this point, we could, still, we could still ask, why is it so um, different? Why, why is LPN, uh, what we can do and what we can say about LPN, is so different from what we can say and what we can do about, uh, about LWE? And there are a number of uh, attempts to sort of try to explain, uh, try to explain this difference. Um, but we want to try to sort of close this gap as much as we can. And what we show in this work uh, is um, sort of a first step in this, uh, in this direction in trying to sort of um, equate the, the status of these two problems. So the first thing that we show is uh, new properties. So we show worst case to average case reduction uh, for LPN. So we sort of would like to show that this LPN, this average case problem, is harder than some worst case problem. And the worst case problem that we're going to think about is the nearest code word problem, which is a problem that comes from sort of the problem of decoding, uh, decoding linear codes. So for our purposes, you can think about this nearest code, code word problem just as a worst case version of LPN. So rather than 
the matrix A, these coefficients being uh, random elements and the noise being sampled from some distri distribution, you should just think, think of these uh, A and E as chosen adversarially with some, uh, with some parameters, say M equals N squared. So this is going to be sparse codes. Um, and this is going to be the nearest code word problem. And actually, for our reduction, we require uh, nearest code word problem with balanced matrix A, which means that if you think about the matrix A as a generator matrix for, um, for a linear code, then all code words in this code are going to have Hemingway to very close to one half. How close? Something like one half minus uh, uh, one over poly. So this is uh, um, sort of perhaps a, a bit aggressive uh, parameter regime. Uh, this is what we know how to do. And you know, as an excuse, you can say that, uh, well, since a random code has this property, it means that most codes have this property. Uh, I don't know how convincing it is, but at least at this point, this is what we, uh, this is what we can say. This is still sort of a worst case problem. So any uh, A and E that have these, uh, that have these properties uh, are going to be considered uh, in our reduction. And this is not all the bad news. Uh, so what we show is a worst case to average case reduction with sort of <laughs> the worst possible performance. So what we show is that you know, the hardest instance of the average case problem. So you take the LPN, the hardest LPN that you can, that you can consider. So the noise is going to be 1 half uh, one minus 1 over poly. And what we're going to show is that, well, it's harder than a worst case problem, but it's harder than this nearest code word problem in this barely hard parameter regime. So if, if the uh, weight of the noise is something like log square n over n. So this is still better than what was known before. However, you could hope, for, uh, not, you could hope to not lose so much in the, uh, in the reduction, but this is what we get in this work. Um, the other thing that we show is containment as in SDK. So again, this could be interpreted as uh, sort of evidence of easiness, like the problem is not going to be NP hard. And as you would predict, uh, we, sh we have this proof of easiness for the easiest version of these problems. So we show that these sort of barely, uh, barely hard uh, uh, LPN or uh, nearest code or problem um, are actually contained in SDK. So like the, the easiest uh, parameter regime we can think of is not going to be, uh, is unlikely to be NP hard. Um, again, uh, this was not known before, so um, now it is. Um, can also get, uh, we can also get new applications uh, based on these techniques. Um, one thing that we can show is uh, collision-resistant hashing based on the, um, uh, based on the barely hard uh, LPN, uh, LPN problem. Uh, and I should say that um, uh, concurrently, uh, you et al. Uh, were able to uh, present the construction that's uh, almost identical, the construction itself. Um, so, and follow-up works were actually able to sort of use uh, the, these, uh, these techniques uh, to introduce um, uh, other applications such as IDE and, and other things. And uh, again, uh, there's more things that are, that are known now. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, this, is what we, this is what we show in this work. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about our techniques. So um, the technique that we use is sort of, uh, we think of it as smoothing. So if you've heard this term in the lattice regime, hopefully it will connect. And if not, then let me tell you, uh, let me tell you what I mean. Good. Um, so I'm going to start uh, with uh, um, a work by Lubashevsky from 2005. And um, Lubashevsky actually considered an LPN to LPN reduction. So he was considering the following thing. Um, you want to solve an LPN instance with n squared many equations. However, what you have is a solver for LPN, but this solver actually needs a lot more equations, let's say n to the 100. Actually, Vadim needed even more than that, but for our purposes, this is, this is the parameters that we're going to think about. So we have a solver that needs many, many LPN equations, and we only got uh, much, uh, much fewer equations. And what this reduction shows is that so long as your uh, n to the 100 solver can manage with much, much, much higher noise than, your, um, uh, than the n square instance that you started from, then this is actually doable. So uh, you can think about it as a reduction uh, where if you have, again, if you have a solver uh, which requires many equations but high noise, uh, you can actually use it to solve LPN with much fewer equations but much smaller noise. And let's see how it is done. So this is done using sort of re-randomization. And the observation is that the matrix A, the, this random LPN matrix, <coughs> you can actually use it as an entropy extractor. So we know that uh, for a random matrix, a random vector multiplication is going to uh, sort of extract randomness. So uh, we have this now n by n squared matrix, which is sort of corresponds to the A part of the n squared LPN instance that we, that we got. 
And what we know is that if we multiply it by a vector r, with, which comes from a distribution of sufficient entropy, then what we're going to get is, um, in the end, is a vector a prime, where the joint distribution of capital A and a prime is um, mutually, mutually uniform, or statistically, statistically close to uniform. Um, so in order for this reduction to work, we need to find, we, we're going to need to find su such distributions on R that on one hand has sufficient entropy. So the required entropy is of course at least n bits because we're generating this A prime which has uh, roughly n, n bits of entropy. Um, so we need this R distribution to have at least uh, entropy n. And in addition, we'd want for the purposes of the reduction as we, we're going to see in, in a second, we want this R to have as low as possible Hemming weight. So, you know, quickly, if we think about it, then obviously we can get such a distribution with Hemming weight n. But if we think a little bit more, uh, you can actually see that you can uh, generate a distribution with Hemming weight uh, something like n over log n, uh, which, still has, uh, which still has entropy n. And actually, this gap between n and n over log n is going to buy us a lot in, in this setting. So this is actually what we capitalize on, what Vadim capitalize on and what we we're going to cap capitalize on. So. Um, um, once you have once you have this uh, once you have this distribution, uh, what you're going to do is the following: uh, the reduction is going to generate like n to the 100 vectors r. So each one of these vectors r is going to be used to generate you know a new sample for the n to the 100 solver. So um, we're going to sample uh, n to the 100 such r's, and for each one of these r's, we're going to compute uh, a prime as I showed here. So a prime is going to be r times a, and b prime, which is go just going to be r times b. And we claim that this is going to be close to uh, an, L an LPN instance with the same secret, um, but with uh, uh, a, somewhat higher, a somewhat higher noise. And since we can generate as many of those as we want, in particular, we can generate n to the 100 of those, then we can feed this into the, um, into the 100 solver and uh, hopefully get, uh, get our s back. So let's try to see by how much the noise blows up with this, with this operation. So, um, this b prime, which equals to r times b, now I'm going to open the parentheses. b just equals to a times s plus e. So what we get is uh, r, times a, r times a times s, which is just a prime times s. This is good because this is what we want. Uh, this is sort of going to correspond to um, like the, the equation that we're getting uh, from the, uh, for the LPN instance, plus some e prime. And this e prime is going to be equal to the inner product of this r that we sampled from our distribution and the original, the noise of the original LPN instance e. And again, if you do the, uh, if you do the arithmetic, you're going to see that e prime actually grows kind of by a lot. And again, you need to do the calculation exactly and not just do the first order approximation, which is going to give you something that is useless. But if you, um, if you do the calculation carefully, <clears throat> what, you, what you're going to get is that um, delta prime, one minus two times delta prime, is sort of comparable, is going to be equal to one minus two times delta to the power n over log n. n over log n is the weight of, of r that we, that we picked. So we see that delta prime is going to converge to one half really quickly. Um, however, sort of if we plug in this barely hard parameter regime, so if we start with delta, which is log square n over n, then delta prime is actually not going to escape from this uh, sort of, is not going to escape into the regime, which is information theoretically hard. So it's still going to be computationally tractable. So delta prime is just still going to be one half minus one over polynomial. And this is sort of uh, what, what happens in our reduction. So this is an LPN, uh, this is sort of an average case to average case reduction, which just uh, uh, sort of changes the, number, uh, changes the number of samples. And we'd want to apply the same, uh, sort of the same method also for, the, for a worst case problem. So rather than starting with an LPN instance with m equals n squared, now we're going to start with sort of, again, the, a comparable uh, LPN instance. But now uh, the matrix A and the vector E are going, to be chosen, uh, are going to be chosen adversarially rather than uniformly. So um, we, we would like to, would like to see what happens in this, uh, in this case. But before that, let me say that uh, the application for collision-resistant hashing actually follows already from this, uh, from this uh, setting of average case to average case reduction. Um, and uh, the reason, I guess the right way of thinking about it, and thanks to Leo Duca for um, sort of uh, um, 
say, expressing it in this way, is that um, um, we already know, like the standard way of constructing um, collision-resistant hashing in this setting is to use the binary short integer solution problem. So if you thought about it, then you probably know what I mean. If not, it doesn't matter that much. And what this reduction actually shows is, that, uh, is how to actually convert the binary short integer solution problem uh, into a solution for the um, sort of barely hard LPN, barely hard LPN problem. And this is sort of how the reduction works. But sort of once you have this, then just sort of we could just plug it in into sort of stuff that we know, and you get the collision-resistant hashing. So let's get back to the worst case to average case uh, setting. So now we have this worst case problem, uh, worst case problem in CP, and we have this matrix A, and we know that A is balanced, but other than that, we don't know anything, um, or close to being balanced, not necessarily perfectly balanced. Um, so. An, an adversarial matrix is not going to be an entropy extractor, so we cannot just use verbatim the same thing as, as we did before. Um, however, we don't actually need an entropy extractor because we can choose the distribution of R to be, any, to be a, a distribution of R choosing. We don't have to work with any distribution that has been entropy. And what we, uh, what we need to show and what we actually show is that um, for a specific distribution of R that has the properties that we want, any uh, close to... Uh, um, any close to uh, balanced matrix is going to be, uh, is actually going to be sort of a deterministic extractor from this particular uh, entropy, uh, from this particular entry, entropy distributions. Um, and um, the analysis uses a Fourier transform and is actually similar to analysis that's done in coding theory, uh, in particular in some in work by uh, Koparty and Saraf. Um, and one has to think a little bit what is the right way to define uh, the distribution R in such a way to, as to make the analysis go through. So there's a few sort of obvious uh, guesses on, on how to choose R with these parameters, but it turns out that only one of them leads to sort of a clean analysis, or at least to a clean analysis that we can perform. Um, so uh, this is uh, sort of how the worst case to average case reduction works. Um, and um, uh, just uh, sort of end up with some, with some open problems. So the, the, um, I guess I didn't say anything about the statistical zero knowledge result, but again, it follows from the same sort of uh, intuition of smoothing. So again, if you know about this uh, statistical distance problem, which is like a problem that is usually, uh, say, which is usually used when, when we talk about SDK, then you can think how to sort of convert these ideas into a reduction. But um, again, I think this, uh, again, this is a first step, and we, uh, part of it is to sort of lay out some open problems for um, people, including ourselves, to think about. So one is, of course, to extend the parameters of the reduction to sort of get uh, sort of less pathetic uh, connection between the parameters of the worst case problem and the parameters of the average case problem. And again, you can th also think about uh, sort of whether the balancedness of the code can be relaxed uh, and, uh, and, and some other sort of uh, uh, parameters that can be, uh, that can be improved. Um, so there's this uh, question of even like for the specific technique of, of smoothing, um, is th are we doing the best that's possible? Can you think about uh, sort of different distributions that are going to have better properties? Maybe you can sort of try to sort of play with a distribution that is, does not have entropy but only has uh, like computational entropy or, or some things of this sort in order to uh, improve, either improve the result or show that at least this the use of this technique uh, is, is tight in some way. Um, smoothing for unbalanced codes, actually we, we can get some smoothing results even for codes that are unbalanced but have good minimum weight, but this, uh, this uh, smoothing property or this extraction property is not going to be strong enough in order to get a meaningful worst case to average case reduction. Um, so more can be sort of uh, investigated in that regime. Another uh, sort of thing that sort of always bothers me when I, when I think about these results is uh, that we don't actually know whether um, you know, our results actually follow from a trivial property. So it could be the case that even though currently we only know how to solve the log n over n regime, even the log square n over n regime is solvable in polynomial time, and this would explain all of our results, right? I mean, uh, being in SDK, having a worst case to average case reduction, and so forth. So if this is, there is actually a polynomial time algorithm uh, for log square n over n, uh, then this would be sort of one explanation as to why we can do what we do, and it would be good to know whether, uh, whether this is the case. Um, I'm almost done. Um, yeah, more cryptography from LPN. People are already working on it. That's great. Uh, last bullet I want to talk about is sort of uh, uh, Vinod's, uh, Vinod's, one of Vinod's obsessions. Um, can you construct a candidate for collision-resistant collision hashing uh, that is provably not in statistical zero knowledge? So one has to think a little bit in order to formally define it in a meaningful way, but I think what Vinod wants is some oracle separation, uh, some oracle world where um, uh, SDK is easy, and yet collision-resistant hashing exists, I think. Hopefully I'm not misinterpreting. Um, thank you.
thanks a lot for the talk. Um, hey, speaker. So, uh, what is this distribution on R for which you can do the analysis? Can you tell us? Yeah. So, um, so okay. Let me first ask you: What do you think the distribution R is? Uh, Bernoulli independent. Uh, so, uh, uh, so unfortunately, we don't know how to do the analysis with this distribution. Notice that this distribution actually does not have high mean entropy. It's only statistically close to having, mean, to having high mean entropy. Uh, so the second guess would be to just sample it from a Hemming ball. And this, I think, is doable, but the analysis is like really hard. And what we end up using is just um, a sum of independent uh, indicator vectors. So we think about vectors of weight one, and you just sample like n over log n of those uh, vectors at random and take their, take their sum mod two. So this turns out to be, because they're independent, then the analysis becomes uh, sort of tame and doable. OK. Uh, another question. Can you do something similar also for the uh, binary version of SIS, a reduction from a minimum distance? Uh, to th so this is the problem that you said is information theoretically unsolvable, because you cannot uniquely recover the secret. But you can still define a problem, which is uh, find a short vector even when it is not unique. So then, analogous of SIS, and uh, instead of reducing from uh, uh, mini from closest vector problem, you would be reducing from uh, uh, minimum distance. Right. So I, gu I guess uh, one way to think about what we do here is that uh, you, you, can, you, can, you actually have a reduction from the binary SIS uh, to this uh, sort of barely hard LPN uh, uh, barely hard LPN. But you're thinking about binary SIS, worst case to average case binary SIS? Yes. So other than sort of going through this uh, sort of, yeah, uh, no, we don't actually. Uh, one direction would yeah, yeah, be quantum. Yeah, you're going to get stuck, right? Because so you have the, yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't know how to do this okay. at this point. OK, um, any more questions? Or maybe I have one. So as you said, uh, you know, we always, whenever we do something in LWE, we want to do the same in LPN. So the, the worst case problem in LWE is obviously the lattice problems. Can you see these worst case problems for LPN as some kind of, you know, it's short shortest code word, right? But is this some kind of a lattice problem too, or? So, yeah, so usually we think of, co of uh, coding problems as different from lattice problems. Actually, I'm, never mind, I have a slide about it, but let's not uh, go there. Um, actually, you could think even of co about coding problems as lattice problems. So this lattice is actually going to be, uh, so if you, if you think about the lattices that naturally comes from LWE, they're going to be periodic over Q times the, the unit cube, and the lattices that come from binary codes are going to be periodic over two times the unit cube. So these lattices, they still exist, and they still have like interesting uh, short code word problems, but a lot of the connections, uh, um, a lot of the other connections that we have kind of break. So um, for example, like like finding short vectors uh, in these lattices is easy because there's always a vector of length two because two zero 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 is going to be in this lattice. Uh, however, decoding still sort of translates even in the even in the Euclidean uh, even in the Euclidean regime uh, to uh, sort of a closest vector problem. So closest vector problems in these uh, uh, in these uh, um, types of lattices are still going to be hard. And perhaps I should also also mention uh, Daniela's works on these uh, sort of showing NP hardness of these uh, of these de decoding problems. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks, the speaker. I think we are out of time. Okay, yeah, for all of us. Um, so you could consider a variant which is between LWE and LPN, where the modulus is large, but the noise is a kind of all or nothing noise, right? And p fraction of the coordinates are noisy. And as far as I know, the previous uh, worst case to average case uh, uh, reductions for lattices don't work for this uh, variant of LWE. So my question is, ca can you do the same tricks and in this domain and whether the parameters are better in this uh, when, when the modulus is large, when, when the field is large? So you can do similar things. Um, I didn't write it down. I mean, I a little bit, wrote it down only a little bit. I think the parameters get a little bit worse. You need to, like, your worst case problem actually becomes more restricted. Rather than sort of doing, go, going with uh, sort of close to being balanced, you need to be close to being sort of balanced modulo, like every, uh, you need to be balanced over every sort of uh, Q, QRE uh, uh, coset. So it, it, it seems that, uh, you know, things uh, do not play as nicely. However, it's definitely something that one should investigate. Yeah. Okay, so let's thank the speaker and welcome.